All right, concept two, we're gonna talk about nutrition and metabolism. And I'm gonna do my best not to be redundant with things that already were learned in biology one because there's no point to reteach something you should have already learned, especially if I got to be your biology one teacher. We've already covered a lot of topics related to this, but I do wanna cover the, these two topics within the context of absorption and excretion, which is what our unit's all about. So here we go, a little bit of an overview. What are nutrients? I've used that word a lot um, already, just talking about the digestive system. And nutrients are substances in food that the body uses to promote normal growth, repair, and maintenance. Our bodies are very efficient and we want to break down and absorb the right nutrient from our food at the right time. And we don't want to waste. Um, so we're very, very efficient at doing that. There are considered to be 40 essential nutrients that our bodies can't make as fast as they need them. So our diet has to provide them. So we have to eat to survive. And calories are the unit of measurement of the energy stored within the chemical bonds of our food. So when you see that word calorie on a nutrition label or something like that, it's a measurement of energy. And you only need certain amounts of energy and thus calories. And so that's why a lot of people like to count their calories. Um, but we'll kind of investigate if that is the best way to... Um, to diet or watch what you eat or not. We'll kind of look into that when we do a little investigation of kind of fad diets and things like that and trends in um, health and wellness. So there are actually six essential nutrients or categories of nutrients um, that you need to survive. So you need water. Um, we're not even going to talk about this in detail, but you absolutely have to have water to survive. Um, we need carbohydrates, lipids, and fats and proteins, um, and then vitamins and minerals. So carbs, lipids, slash fats, and proteins, those are all macronutrients. Um, you may recognize them as three of the four macromolecules. And notice that I didn't mention nucleic acids. Nucleic acids do exist in the foods that we eat, but when we break down nucleic acids in the food we eat, um, we aren't breaking them down as a source of fuel because if you remember from biology one, they store zero calories of energy um, in them. So they're not useful fuel sources at all. Um, instead, we're just breaking them down um, into the three parts that make up a nucleotide, um, the sugar, the phosphate, and the nitrogenous base. Um, and then we can use those as building blocks for other molecules. Um, so that's why, kind of in a roundabout way, they aren't included on this list. Um, and then we also have micronutrients, which are our vitamins and minerals. And we're going to kind of go through each one of these essential nutrients now. So first, carbohydrates. What are they coming from in your diet? Mainly, almost all, they're coming from plants. Simple sugars and fruits and starches and grains and then also vegetables that you eat. Um, the main exception is lactose, um, which is the sugar that is in milk. What does our body use carbs for? We're using glucose to fuel our body cells with ATP. ATP is an unstable molecule, so we can't just like store ATP in our body as is, which is why we need glucose or we need glycogen that we can break down um, into glucose in order to have energy be stored in the body. About 45 to 65% of the total calories you intake um, should be designated for carbohydrates. And um, we have a little web quest that we're doing where we'll kind of review how these are digested, but just to connect back um, to unit, or excuse me, concept one of this unit, remember starches get broken down um, into simpler um um, carbohydrates like oligosaccharides and disaccharides, those get further broken down into monosaccharides or our simplest sugars like glucose and fructose and galactose. And enzymes like um, amylase that your salivary glands um, secrete um, and others um, in your small intestine, um, they're helping with the digestion of these carbs. And digestion starts in the mouth and then it also continues in the small intestine of carbohydrates. And then 
mainly carbs get absorbed via facilitated diffusion into um, capillary blood, and then they can head to the liver and then out uh, or via the hepatic portal vein and out to whatever cells in the body need them. All right, lipids and fats. These are coming mainly from meat and dairy foods, but also some plants too, like avocados or coconuts, and then of course, oils. Our bodies cannot make omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, so it's really important um, that we eat those. We're using um, fats as protective cushioning, insulation, energy storage, um, fossil lipids in your cell membranes, and so much more. They have lots of roles. About 20 to 30 percent of your total calorie intake or caloric intake should be designated for fats, um, with saturated fats specifically being 10 percent or less. Um, other uses, lipids and fats do so much. Cholesterol is a precursor to bile salts and also some steroid hormones. Triglycerides serve as energy source for skeletal muscles. Um, they help us absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Um, there's just so many things. Overview of digestion, we're basically taking triglycerides and breaking them down into monoglycerides and or fatty acids. And that's being done by emulsifying our fats in bile salts um, so that they can get broken down. And this breakdown happens in the stomach and small intestine. And then... Um, some can diffuse, but um, some are using exocytosis in order to be transported into capillary blood and then head to the liver and then off to the rest of the body. Proteins. We're getting proteins from eggs, milk, fish, meat, beans, and nuts in our diet. There are 20 uh, amino acids. Nine of the amino acids are considered essential because we can't make them in our body, so we have to eat them. We use them to do everything in our body. I can't even list it all because we don't even have time. Structurally, they make up so many things. Functionally, they do so many things. I just can't even do it justice now. You can go back and watch the Biology 1 video about macromolecules or go back to Unit 1 where we reviewed um, some biology topics and we talked about macromolecules then. Proteins are so important. Um, the dietary requirement, there isn't really like a specific number per se. It all kind of depends on your age and um, your size and your metabolism. Um, but in general, most people need about 0.8 grams of protein per one kilogram that they weigh. Um, and they are digested. We break them down. We talked about into um, polypeptides and then to the smaller peptides and then into amino acids. Um, pepsin has plays a big role in this as well as some pancreatic enzymes. It's going down, digestion is going down mainly in the stomach and small intestine. And then to get absorbed, um, we often absorb them alongside sodium and hydrogen and then move them um, using facilitated diffusion into capillary blood and then again to the liver and then on to the rest of the body. All right. Those should have been lots of review from Biology 1, but now I want to talk about these micronutrients that are a bit new, at least if you've been my student over the years. So vitamins, what are they? Some of you may take one every day. Um, they are just organic compounds that help the body get the nutrients it needs. So most of them are functioning as coenzymes. So we're not using them for energy and we're not building necessarily other compounds from them, but they're playing a critical role in allowing us to use other compounds for energy and um, building blocks. Um, an example, um, sorry, I digressed, of a vitamin that acts as a coenzyme is vitamin B. Um, it's a coenzyme in the oxidation of glucose for energy. And vitamins can be classified as water-soluble or fat-soluble. Um, water-soluble, those are like B-complex vitamins, like B12 and, um, and um, vitamin C, and they get absorbed with water and your gastrointestinal tract. Um, our bodies don't store these, so if they aren't taken into a cell within an hour of ingestion, they get excreted. And no one food contains all of our required vitamins, so it's really important that you have a balanced diet. And then fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K, those are absorbed with other lipids, because um, lipids are fats, and um, in the small intestine. Fun fact about these, though, is our bodies can and do store these vitamins. So that's kind of interesting. 
All right, minerals. Minerals are inorganic chemical compounds that are found in nature. Um, another way of thinking of them is as salts. They don't provide fuel either, but they do lots of other things. They make up structures in our body um, stronger. They bind to organic compounds, um, and they get ionized in body fluids. So an example, iron is a key component of the protein hemoglobin, and that's something we talked about in Unit 4 Transport. Sodium and chlorine ions are key electrolytes um, in our blood. Calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, chlorine, sodium, and magnesium, we have to have at least 200 milligrams of each day. All of the other minerals that we need are considered, we need them in trace amounts. Um, minerals actually make up 4% of our body weight with calcium and phosphorus, which are um, minerals in our bones, making up 75% of that 4%, which is kind of crazy. Um, so I think vitamins and minerals are really interesting. So we're going to do a little research and report activity about them in class. But again, for the sake of the video, we're going to keep trucking forward. So let's talk about metabolism. Metabolism is all of the biochemical reactions in our body. So that is including anabolic and catabolic reactions. Anabolic reactions link simple molecules to make complex ones. So the, we're building an anabolic. Um, and overall, that causes a consumption of energy. Catabolic reactions are breaking down complex molecules into smaller ones. So just the opposite. We're tearing down, and that's going to yield an overall release in energy. Digestion, which was what all concept one was about, is a catabolic reaction, and it's accomplished by enzymes that get secreted into your GI tract, mainly your small intestine, in order to break down your food. Um, and something interesting to consider with catabolic is part of that energy output, that overall release in energy, um, is heat loss, which is actually really important um, to maintaining homeostatic body temperature, so regulating your body temperature while maintaining homeostasis, and mainly your hypothalamus is regulating that. So your body, y'all, is in a constant dynamic balance of these anabolic and catabolic reactions. Molecules are constantly getting broken down and then built into other things. So that's an introduction to metabolism. Um, you may have heard the phrase, I have a fast metabolism, or I have a slow metabolism. Really what you're referring to is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which reflects the energy um, our body needs to perform its most essential functions, like breathing and just keeping your organs functioning. And it depends on, your BMR depends on your age and your gender, um, stress, um, a hormone called thyroxin that your thyroid gland um, secretes, and a bunch of other things. So in general, some general trends with BMR, younger people will have a faster metabolism or a higher BMR than older. Um, males tend to have a higher BMR than females. Stress can actually increase your BMR because um, it, it initiates your fight or flight response. And then the more thyroxin your thyroid gland is producing, the higher your BMR. And a couple of it, those are just some of the trends in that. So that's just, I, I know that's a question that many people always have. Um, there's three stages of processing our food for energy. So digestion and absorption in the GI tract before being transferred by our blood into our tissue cells. Um, nutrients then that get transported to our cells can be built into other macromolecules, which would be an anabolic reaction, or they can be processed to be used for energy, which would be a catabolic reaction by going through glycolysis in the cytoplasm of our cells, which that should be a familiar term from Biology 1. And then going through the citric acid or Krebs cycle in the ETC or oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. So that's the main way we're using our food. So again, stage one would be in your GI tract. We're taking proteins and carbs and fats and we're breaking them down into um, their smallest components. And then those small components are getting transported in our tissue cells. And then if we're going to break them down for energy, that's going to happen in the cytoplasm. And then um, acetyl-CoA will enter the Krebs cycle and the ETC to get broken down into ATP. I really like this picture. Um, the light purple arrows, which are 
right here are showing um, anabolic reactions. The black and gray are showing catabolic or breaking down reactions, um, which I just think is interesting. The last thing I want to mention, which should be familiar from the web quest we did, um, are nutritional states. So um, we're talking here about an absorptive state that your body can be in or a post-absorptive state. So absorptive is your fed state. This lasts about four hours after you start eating food. Nutrients are moving um, through your GI tract and being absorbed into your blood. And there's more anabolism happening here than catabolism. We're storing nutrients. We're building broken down nutrients into molecules that we need. So amino acids are getting built into proteins. Glucose is getting stored as glycogen. Glycerol and fatty acids are getting stored as triglycerides. Um, what's mainly fueling your body at this point is glucose. So any excess glucose we're going to be storing as glycogen or fat. Um, and then all of this is really just controlled and directed by insulin, which is a hormone we talked about in Unit 3. Then we have the post-absorptive state, which is also known as the fasting state. And this is when your GI tract would be empty. Um, like when you're asleep, it's probably going to be empty at that point, unless you're eating like right before you go to sleep. So catabolism here or breaking down of nutrients is going to exceed anabolism. We're going to stop making fats and glycogen and proteins and start breaking them down for whatever our bodies need at the time. So What's fueling your body? What's providing energy? Well, the, your body reserves. Um, so whatever you have stored. Because glucose needs to be available for your brain. Your brain cells rely on glucose solely. So where are we going to get that glucose from for your neurons? Well, we can break down glycogen um, in the liver to get glucose. We can break down glycogen that's in your skeletal muscles. We can convert glycerol from adipose tissues in your liver. And then if we have to, we can break down proteins that are in your tissues, but that is going to be a last resort. And all of this is going to be controlled and directed by glucagon and also your sympathetic nervous system. And last but not least in our little nutrition and metabolism overview, I have to mention the liver, um, which we talked about with the digestive system. But one of its major roles, it has so many but it's processing the majority of our nutrients and then regulating plasma cholesterol levels. So cholesterol is a steroid made by your liver that's found in a ton of body tissues, and it's a major component of the plasma membrane as well. And it's also the structural basis for bile salts, which we saw how important those were in the digestion of fats in concept one. Um, it's the basis for steroid hormones which we talked about in concept three of unit three, and then also of vitamin D. And your liver also makes lipoproteins or lipoproteins for transporting lipids like cholesterol in your blood, um, since your blood is mainly water, and regulating entry and exit from specific target cells. So your liver is super important. Again, it does so many things. Um, about 15% of our cholesterol is coming from the food we eat. So if you're like, wait, I thought we were supposed to limit cholesterol. Well, that's only you only need to eat like 15% of your cholesterol because 85% is being made um, by the liver. So that's why we don't need like insane amounts of cholesterol in our food. And that's something to kind of watch out for. Um, also, fun fact, your hepatocytes, which are your liver cells, have about 500 or more potentially more metabolic function. So your liver is just a really important organ in metabolism, which is why it was worth mentioning. So that is our overview of nutrition and metabolism.